Okay, guys. So, uh, like I told you before, this is a pre-recorded lecture. The topic is actually from the previous one that I give you on Tuesday, which is the application of enzyme. So, this is about enzyme immobilization. As you know, immobilize means you cannot move. Mobilize means you're moving. So, what you do here is you bind the enzyme to something so they cannot move. Okay, instead of moving freely in the solution, they actually bind to something. In this case, usually it is the what we call the support or they bind to each other. Okay, so this is a legacy lecture notes from Professor Sana. So, some of the information might be missing or it's not updated. Okay, we will see through the lecture notes as we go on okay i will try to give this lecture short and sweet because i only have 15 minutes trial all right so as you can see in this picture this one is the beads sometimes you can see this one when you put your plants and this bit can provide the water to your plants by releasing the, the water slowly in this case what you do is actually you put the enzyme inside these beads okay and then when you put the solution inside the substrate the enzyme in this bits can react with your substrate and produce the product and when it produces a product you can take out your product from your uh, beaker and then you can reuse the enzyme with the bits all right so that's the advantages of using the immobilized enzyme okay so you will have what we call a heterogeneous two-phase system means that one system is solid another one is liquid so you have two phase system two different phase okay you can uh, watch YouTube later on. Uh, I will upload this new version of lecture notes that I add some of the information, new information for you in the Putra Brass later on. Okay, because the one that I gave you before is not completed yet. Okay, so this is quite complicated. We just go through a very simple version of the enzyme immobilization. Although you can see there are five different types of immobilization, probably more because this field is always evolving but actually there are three major ones okay the first one when you bind the enzyme to the support as you can see in the blue color okay this is one type the second type when you trap the enzyme inside what we call as matrix okay you can trap multiple enzymes or you can trap individual enzymes and the last one you can use cross-linking okay you bind the enzyme to each other so they will aggregate all right so for adsorption, there are several uh, what we call a uh, support that you can use. Okay, for example, in this case, you can use glass, silica gel, and so on. Okay, so what you do is you put the glass and you incubate your enzyme together with the glass, and you incubate probably four to five hours, and you let them to bind to the inner support. Okay. In this case, when you use covalent bonding, probably you add something to form the covalent bonding. Okay, and then when you remove the solution, you wash away, you will have your enzyme bind to the inner support. This one is not very strong compared to the covalent bonding. Of course, covalent bonding is stronger. Okay, so you need to add something more. Okay, and probably, for example, if you use agros, I don't know if you are familiar with agros. Agros is like agar-agar that you use in the lab. Uh, usually, we, we use them for agros gel atrophoresis, okay, or alginate, another type for agar-agar, carrageenan collagen okay is agar agar texture what you can do is you can actually trap your enzyme inside this agar agar texture okay so they will form bits like this okay and for cross-linking usually you add some certain kind of chemical that cause that, that cause them to cross-link with each, each other okay the most usual one that you can use is glutaraldehyde okay so it will form cross-linking between the uh, different enzymes and it will form what we call as aggregate all right so why immobilization why i could say something about advantages as well so what an advantage should be about similar okay the first one is because you can reuse the enzyme for example the bits just now after you get the product you can remove the product and you can reuse the enzyme okay and then immobilization often i'm not sure what professor is trying to say here probably often more economical okay anything that is logical all right it is more difficult to denature immobilized enzyme okay because there is 
a decrease in the rotational freedom of the enzyme. If the enzyme is freely moving, you actually can cause the enzyme to denature. This is, uh, I would say, something about organic chemistry. But if you bound the enzyme, they are static, you actually can reduce the possibility of getting immobilized. Okay. Also, because of the decrease in rotational freedom, they also have less chance of unfolding. And finally, better protected from external environment. Because you entrap the enzyme inside the matrix, or you bound to support, you actually support them from the attack. You actually protect them from the attack of the external environment. Okay. You, for example, you can exclude or remove inhibitors. The use of immobilized enzyme usually result in the production of pure final product because your enzyme is not mixed together with the product. So you don't have to purify them anymore. Okay, there is a possibility of conducting continuous reaction. Okay, because you can use the enzyme many times, so you can do them in a the continuous manner. Right? And there are also probably more advantages to it. Okay, for example, your enzyme is more stable, right? And then you can probably um, reuse them many times and so on. Okay. So like I said, why and advantages is actually about the same. So I'm not, I don't know why Professor Hassana separate them. Okay, so the advantages is actually a multi-step reaction can be carried out. means that you can use them many times. The cell provides a protective environment for the enzyme, the same as before, okay? Because you trap it in the matrix or something, the, you actually can protect them from the attack of the environmental mat, uh, factors, for example, inhibitor. There is no need for supply of exogenous cofactor because probably the enzyme is already activated when you uh, bind them to the support. And if an enzyme is too expensive to isolate, an active enzyme in a whole inactivated microorganism can be used okay for example uh, you know just now if we want to immobilize the enzyme we know we need to use the three methods right another method is which is using the microorganism because the enzyme is already inside the microorganism so actually the microorganism works as the matrix or the support for the enzyme okay so for example when you go to the microorganism in, for example, the microorganism is streptomyces. They can produce glucose isomerase, probably through GMO and so on. So what you you can do is you inactivate microorganism, but you do do not burst their cell structure, and then you can use them as the beads, or you can use them as immobilized enzyme in your reaction. Immobilized enzymes are more costly due to the additional step need, needed for immobilization. Okay, this is disadvantages. Okay, so because you need to use extra chemical, you need to use the support. It can be more expensive. There is some loss of activity during immobilization because one, it cannot move freely, so the combination between active site and the substrate is reduced. Okay, for the first one, and also effect of okay, this one is the same lah because. Uh, the enzyme is not free, so the enzyme orientation might be static and it cannot react freely with the substrate. There may be reduction in reaction rates due to diffusion limitation, especially when substrate is macromolecules. So when you trap your enzyme inside a matrix, for example, sometimes the substrate cannot diffuse into the matrix and react with the enzymes because probably the pore is too small or the substrate is too big so they cannot penetrate into the matrix and the reaction cannot happen or the reaction is less optimal okay the other advantages is it is difficult to maintain the integrity of the cell this one is immobilized cells the microorganism just now because sometimes microorganisms they are very sensitive to the change of the osmotic pressure second when non-growing cells are used the activity of enzyme in the cell will eventually be lost because they cannot grow into a new cell so the enzyme activity might be reduced as they grow older or uh, they are dead or something it is possible to it is possible for a one reaction to take place okay uh, for, for 
for example formation of acetic acid during the formation of citric acid okay because immobilized cell they may have different side reaction as well so they can produce unwanted byproducts the cell wall poses an additional diffusional barrier to substrate accessibility okay the same as before when you trap the enzyme in the matrix the substrate probably cannot penetrate inside and react with the enzyme the same problem might happen in the immobilized cells of microorganism okay there are many applications so you can probably take a look at the journal that i listed down just now it can be used as a tool in biochemical studies um, you can use them you can trap them them and use as a biosensor okay one of the famous biosensor is the pregnancy test where you trap the enzyme and when you put your liquid on it you know that you are pregnant or not because the liquid actually react with the enzyme and it will change in color okay there are medical and cosmetic application and there are also some industrial application okay for example the glucose isomerase just now okay isomerase means that you change glucose to something else which is the same in structure so you can probably change the change into photos okay and so on okay other can be for aspartam production this is i think the sweetener lipase l amino acid and so on okay you can read it yourself okay for example the glucose you can change them to fructose okay in this case because fruit we want to change them to fructose because probably fructose is more sweeter and so on so it's better for the industry as you can see from here, okay, sweetness relative to sucrose. Sucrose, the sweetness is 100, but fructose is sweeter. So, you can use less fructose in your product. Okay, so at the end of your lecture, okay, you can read it yourself. Okay, the summary is enzymes, enzymes are exemplary. Immobilization improves the stability of many industrial enzymes because if they are free they can be they are easily denatured but if you immobilize them they are actually more stable okay although there are some disadvantages as well there is a definite and positive endorsement from the industry the use of enzyme in the production of goods and services is an important component to sustainable industrial development okay because using enzyme is more sustainable than using the chemicals Okay, this one is another one that I'm not sure what Professor Hassanah is trying to convey. The something is one of the main users of enzyme. Probably we can say the people, the industry, or most of us actually use enzymes. Okay, for example, we use enzymes in detergent, in cosmetic, and so on. Okay, I think that's all. Uh, 15 minutes. Okay, if you need further reading, you can always refer to the Wikipedia, okay, because they are very simple and you can read the journals that I gave you in the beginning of the lecture. Or otherwise, if you still need more information, you can, another one is you can use YouTube, okay, very easy to understand about the enzyme immobilization. Or you can drop me an email or send me WhatsApp, okay. So until then, thank you. Bye-bye.